Now let's go back up to the studio where Gary is sitting down with one of Notre Dame's most popular clergymen. <laughs> Gary? Uh, thanks very much, John. And i got to mention, John was one of my students a couple of years ago, too. I think he's doing a fantastic job. But we're here with Father Pete McCormick, who now holds the position of the director of Notre Dame Campus Ministry. And he has filled several roles here at Notre Dame, including student, residence hall director, and even currently the chaplain to the Notre Dame men's basketball team. If you stay in one spot on campus very long, <laughs> Father Pete, you're probably going to end up running into uh, this guy somewhere. And so welcome, Father Pete. We appreciate it. Thanks. First first question everybody always wants me to ask you is, why couldn't you have prayed a little harder for Bonzi Colson's foot? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> talk about tough season. A, tough season, tough moment. But a, a young man who just has incredible resiliency. I talked to him at the end-of-season banquet. And he was already starting to think about, okay, this is how we're going to have to rehab and how I'm going to get ready. And was excited about the agent that he had hired and was really looking forward to what was to come. And so talk about a Notre Dame man, a great example of a young man who just was dealt a tough blow. But yeah. at the same time, got up and is really working hard. And, of course, you're following a long tradition there, as we were talking during the break about uh, the long tradition of campus ministry yeah. at Notre Dame. Uh, Father Reilly, of course, with the basketball team for so many years. Yep. And, and so what's it like being a chaplain on a, on a team like that? It's got to be a unique experience with all those great, great guys. Yeah. It's, first of all, you know, I'm a basketball player my whole life. And so yeah. being around, and I didn't know that basketball would follow me this way when I entered the seminary. And, you know, this opportunity came about. And, I'm loving it. What I have found is, is, is while the experience of traveling with the team and being with the team is amazing, what I really enjoy is actually watching the maturation process of, of these great players, you know, and to see how they overcome the trials and tribulations of being a collegiate athlete. You know, you think about your average college student, that's pressure enough just to pass classes at the University of Notre Dame. Oh, yeah. But then all of a sudden you throw on top of it, you know, competing at a high level right. and the, the ups and downs that come with that. And what I love to see is how a freshman engages that versus how a senior engages that. And it's yeah. a really special and privileged opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to watch the growth and the maturity that, that comes over, over time. Now, speaking of that, we're going to change gears here and just yep. talk about campus ministry sure. now. And that's got its own challenges as well because you're not serving a, a narrow group of people. You're, no. you're serving everybody. Right, that's So right. what are the challenges that you face in doing that? And the challenge is to remain fresh. The temptation, I think, is always to say, well, this worked last year. But my thing, especially with students, is to say, okay, that, all right, let's just play that out on the number scale. 2,000 seniors are going to graduate, and 2,000 freshmen are going to arrive, ballpark. Mm -hmm. So that means if you just do what you did last year, that means 4,000 people on this campus are somehow new. Yeah. And so how are we thinking about um, that dynamic? And then furthermore, um, you have a different kind of experience that all of those the sophomores, juniors, and seniors are now, you know, in a different place in their lives. And so mm -hmm. you got to remain relevant and fresh and thinking about how do you speak to today's student, not to last year's student. I got to believe that energy is a lot of the requirement for the job. I, I, I graduated from here in 81. A lot of things were different. The campus was different. It wasn't as built up. I mean, it was, it, right. but, but many things were the same. And one was that the director of campus ministry was that with it kind of guy who yeah. really wanted to be among the students. And I get the sense that that's part of it for you too. Yeah, I, I just, when I think about the way I've come up, uh, as a Holy Cross priest, serving as an assistant rector in Dillon Hall, then rector of Keogh, mm -hmm. now living in residence in Stanford. Um, I love being with students. I love the energy that they have, and I love the passion that they present, and I really feed off of that. Sure. Talk for a minute about what it means to walk with Notre Dame students. When you, when you walk with them, what does that yeah. mean in, in your terms? It's privileged. It really is. You know, one of the things we did this past Lent uh, in campus ministry is we did a, a kind of a session called Need to Talk. Uh -huh. And from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., Monday through Thursday, we just said, listen, come by campus ministry. Let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed at just kind of sitting there and trusting, uh, being entrusted with what the students were dealing with and talking with them and journeying them with them through it. So it's, it's so neat to be able to have a part of those conversations as they're still actively piecing things together and trying to figure out who they want to be in the world and what their priorities are. So it's just really privileged. It's really yeah. exciting. Now, we, we you know, uh, old people like me, I've been yeah. in the classroom a little bit, yep. and we kind of have our own view of millennials as sure. they've come to be called. So yeah. how have things changed over the years for you? I mean, in, especially in terms of religion. Yeah. How do students today view Catholicism here at Notre Dame? You know, I think that they reflect the modern demographic of the United States. But this is what I would say. You have perhaps what is the most accepting generation of all time. And you have a generation that wants and respects authenticity. Mm -hmm. And so the beauty of what we have before us is the opportunity to communicate the gospel message authentically. 
and to allow that to stir within their own hearts. And yeah. so the temptation, I think, is just to kind of read the demographics and read the reports uh -huh. and say, this is who millennials are. But there's, there's more to it than that. And I think it's ultimately how do we authentically engage them in a way that resonates with their experience. i got to admit, you're energizing me here. So uh, <laughs> what are some of the new initiatives you have in campus ministry? Yeah, we have a, a number of them. So the Need to Talk event that I talked about was one. We also did this, this great event called Taste of Faith. Mm -hmm. So what we invited was a series of different speakers from all around the uh, campus just to talk about their own experience of faith. And it wasn't the traditional people like priests, although I was able to participate at one point. Yep. Um, but to hear and allow our students to hear their professors and other administrators to talk about their own experience. And it's been great. We've also coupled it with food, which always benefits the students. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Speaking of which, I'm getting hungry, so uh, we're going to take a dinner break here, right? Thanks so much for being here, Father Pete. We really appreciate it. And